welcome to Talking Art. My name is Jane Treger and we are seated here in the Deerfield Arts Bank in the center of South Deerfield. We are continuing our conversation with artists and um, the next exhibit here at the Deerfield Arts Bank will be on uh, opening uh, on the 12th of March. Uh, we'll have a reception on the 19th. You're all invited, of course, but uh, the uh, exhibit is called Weaving Up and Down 13 Tapestry Weavers. Today, we are having a conversation with Edith Bingham. Hello. Welcome. Nice to, nice to meet you. Nice to, well, nice we to know each you. other. Yes. <laughs> In fact, it, uh, actually there are very few people I've interviewed that I don't know at all, and perhaps none yet, but I look forward to that. That will be a, an interesting challenge. Uh, Edith, uh, Edith, you were in our last exhibit, Paper Cut Art, That's right. and I discovered after we had, you know, deep into the show, that you don't do just paper cuts, you do many other things, primarily oil. Right. But first, before we start talking about the art, tell us, where do you come from? Uh, I grew up in Philadelphia. And, uh, well, I was born in California, but I spent my whole childhood in Philadelphia and then uh, ended up in, in Boston for college. And Which college? It was the Boston Museum School. Uh -huh. I went to art school. That's and relevant. Then, yeah. And then I ended up in New Hampshire. Uh, and I was there for 25 years. But now you're a little closer to here. Now I'm in Shelburne Falls, Massachusetts. That's a wonderful so place to be. I love it. Yeah. yeah, and yep. and uh, <clears throat> I think you have a bed and breakfast. That's right. Yep, we have a B and B in Shelburne Falls. Uh huh. Um, myself and my husband. Uh huh. It's always interesting to know how artists actually um, support themselves. Is it their art? Is it something else, and their art is like a hobby? Is it some spouse who's making enough to support the family, and we can be artists? It's it's difficult, like any um, any home business or um, sole proprietorship. It's um, it's not as dependable as if you have you know quote a real job. Um, <laughs> and my husband is a teacher, so that gives us a little stability. And then we have the B and B, which is is doing very well. Um, and then and that supports my art ho hobby at art habit at the moment. But um, I have brought in um, a significant income over the years with my art as well. So it's just not as stable as, um, as a, you know, a nine to five. So job. as we go along, maybe you'll tell us which, which of the pieces that we, which of the art forms that we're looking at were the ones that were the income producers for you. Right. Okay. Do you wanna, want me to tell you that now? Or? Oh, oh, oh it, just in general, yes. Right. Um, yeah, I've, a little bit of everything, but I've um, mostly um, used my art as illustration to bring in Illustration income. for books? Books, um, products. Um, oh. I, did, I was, did a lot of educational publishing type work. Um, and I got into sign making um, for a while, so a little bit of everything. You mean sign making like the signs we see outside of, of stores? Yeah, yeah. Especially in New Hampshire, I had a lot of that going. So that, that was a very nice income, actually, and it's very um, challenging and rewarding. And so yeah. the book and product illustration is, is uh, is one of the pieces up here behind us that? Actually, yes. This one here um, is from a book that I was commissioned. And I did 17 um, chapter illustrations for a book on the Civil War. It's called The Civil War Era by um, Harold Holzer, uh -huh. who is, um, he is the director of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And his hobby is um, the Civil War history. And the 
um, forward was written by Ken Burns, so I felt in really good company. Good with that. company. Yeah. The one that you're pointing to is um, called the Immigrants. Right. So that's a little earlier than the Civil War. Is, right. Is well, that the, the background part? That's the background. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it was written. The book was written. It's a two-part series. It was written for um, geared towards young people, I sort see. of high school yes. age. And yes. it's a very beautifully... Well, we'll get back to that yeah. because I want to talk about the art right. form itself. Right. Okay. And so um, so you went to the, um, to the Boston Museum School. Is that right. your first training in art? Um, no, no. Um, I, art was sort of... Um, in, it was a part of my life from the get-go. I was always an artist from early childhood. And art was very... Um, important in our family. Um, there were several artists in my immediate family and um, I was given a lot of encouragement at home. And then in high school there was an incredibly good art department and we had art history, we could take art as a major and that's where I got most of my training. Um, at the Boston Museum School I learned um, what I mostly got out of that was drawing and anatomy, um, figure drawing, and so that was really important to me. Well, so a theme that comes up here is um, so, some of the things that the notes that you've written me and some of the things you just said is um, mentorship. So you noted to me here earlier that the teacher you had at the museum school was a really excellent teacher. Yeah, and yeah. then you pointed out that you had a really excellent, you used the word again, art uh, department in high school. Right. And then you pointed out that you have two artists in the family. Right. Were they um, successful artists or right. just well, artists? Right. My great aunt and her husband, my great uncle, um, who I never, uh, never actually met, um, but my aunt was, was a regular in our household, and um, she was a painter. Um, my uncle was a well-known illustrator from the early uh, 20th century, and he illustrated, uh, he, he made illustrations for the Saturday Evening Post. His name was M.L. Blumenthal. Right. And so do, do you, it, it seems to me that having, in, having significant mentors and teachers in mm -hmm. one's career path mm -hmm. actually determines the future really in an important way. Well, it did for me. It did yeah. for you, yeah. yeah. Sometimes and, and you get there just by chance, but you had good leadership. Right, and part of that also was we had a really good art history class in high school and then also in, in college. And even since then, um, I've taken art history courses. And I've spent a lot of time in museums looking at art. And well, now let's look at your art. <laughs> okay. Let's look at our museum here. All right. We have three pictures behind us, and they're all from the paper cut exhibit. Right. And um, we'll get to them, f but first I think we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the paintings, because that's where you said you started. Right. So we're <coughs> going to see, I think, about four or five, maybe six paintings here. And, um, well, maybe only four, actually, sorry. Um, so this one here with the ice skater, this you told me was one of your earliest ones. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, well, it wasn't my earliest painting, but it's the earliest of the ones that I have here. And um, yeah, it was just, um, I guess I was um, interested in landscapes at the time. and and the interaction between the figure and the landscape. Um, and it was, I, I work from photographs. It was an amazing day because you had the ice was solid for the first time and you had these amazing noises going on, this sort of whoosh, you know, in the, uh, that was sort of echoing over the valley. And it was, it was just an amazing moment. And it's actually a picture of my son um, who's, you know, doing this sort of very contemplative kind of skating in a figure eight pattern, and it just it just really spoke to me, and I, and I needed to. 
put why, it out there as an image. Why is this one something that you link up to your paper cuts? Well, because as you can see, there's there's a silhouette there. You can really see the link, oh. the connection between the silhouette of the figure and and how I how I do the silhouettes in the paper cuts. Well, if you'll allow me, from the one we just looked at before, the one the immigrants, right, and this one here, what I see in common is the line of the shadow, his shadow of his legs across the ice reminds me, and it links to him, it, hold, right. it holds on, it rem is reminiscent of the, of the lines of the water that touch on the hand of that person who is uh, holding the papoose. Right. And it's, yeah. they, and so the lines, and so all the lines are connected to something. Yeah. I, in the painting, it's not connected to anything afterwards, but in here, it's what holds the p whole piece together. Yeah, and when and in in creating a composition in a painting, you um, that's part of it is you you have to see the abstract parts connecting. That's really important. So you have all these swirly lines of the ice that's just forming, and then right. these extremely strong vertic uh, horizontal lines of his shadow. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's really what speaks to me and what I'm trying to trying to get across visually. So we yeah. have another oil here. This one of um, of a of a scene, some some very quaint corner city scene. Yes, it's uh, old Quebec City. Oh, that yes. is quaint, old yeah. Quebec City. Yes. yes, and again, the the shadows and the light are are you know the the visual. The visual interest is in how the how, yes. the how the shadows work with the with the light in that. Right. We actually yeah. see as a light form that connection rather than as a shadow that mm -hmm. that light that's coming out of that building and moving across the. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh -huh. so um, so it, it, the next two paintings we're going to look at are egg tempera. Right. And one of them you told me is a truck that I've never seen, but probably lots of other people have seen. Where is it on Route what? It's on Route 9 in Williamsburg. And How did I miss that? How my, can one miss that? Um, it's my son and his significant other were farming there um, uh, as of a couple of years ago. And so the, the title of that piece is Shauna's Garden. Shauna's Garden. Yes. and. I always loved that scene, and so I and um, egg temper is is sort of new with me. It's um, I've only been doing it for maybe four or five years. Well, so I'm going to show my complete ignorance and and okay. help us all along, and explain to us, please, what is egg tempera? Okay, um, egg tempera is sort of a precursor to oils, and. Um, Artists like Botticelli and um, and Michelangelo and in that era, um, you know, pre-Renaissance used uh, egg temperate, and it's basically it's pigment mixed with egg and a little water, and e egg yolk. Egg yolk. Yes, and it it's a very strong, long-lasting paint, but it's very finicky, and um, so it's. It takes, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of a lot of time, and it's it, it's very precise. So I've been taking courses, and um, I love it. It's really well. This is, was a very precise project to do. This this is how the car, the truck is painted. Uh, yeah, the truck is. Um, it's an old piece of junk that was lying in the field, and somebody somewhere decided to. Put, fix it up. Put bright colors on it. So I think I'd like to do that to my car. <laughs> so that was that was the farm stand. That's where she sold her veggies. Uh huh. And and this other painting over here. The one with uh, the portrait. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like something out of the 1700s. Well, that's the way he's standing. actually I think it's more like the 15 or 15. 16. Sorry. And yeah. Well, one of my favorite artists. Um, in history is Albrecht Dürer, and so that's a picture of my son 
posing um, as Dor. posing as a self portrait of Albrecht Dor. So um, it looks a little bit like him. He had long hair like that, didn't he? Right. Uh huh. Right. And so does your son. Right. Were you commenting on to your son about anything with this? Oh, well, it was a, there was a little bit of a joke going on. I there. see. I yeah. see. Okay, so let's move to to um, to the paper cuts. I think um, um, we have three behind us, but we have a few others here to look at. Uh, there's some paper cut is a fascinating topic, and uh, there's some lot of different um, um, traditions. So one of them is is the is the immigrants we saw and and here j behind me Jack Spratt uh, Mr mm -hmm. and Mrs Jack Spratt mm -hmm. it's this uh silhouette form right and uh w one of them has a frame the the black paper frame around it and the other one does not it's uh, two different styles of this and the one between us here you told me this was a poster right <laughs> and as far as i can see this also picks up on t on several traditions one is the frame that holds it together, the fact that there's a symmetry, it's folded in the half, and everything that's here also is here, except for the part in the middle, which is freestanding. But then here you've got another duplication symmetry piece here. And then you've got the color piece, which is a real traditional Polish style. So you've got it all together in this one. Right, and we also have the sort of <coughs> Mexican style yes. of, of the the lacy um, the lacy border yeah and this was done as a as a um for a cause that i was interested in at the time we were it was a promotional for um breastfeeding and um i worked with the health department in our town and we were trying to reach out to the mostly mexican population in the neighborhood very good and, very good and which was pretty difficult because they were really um, at the time they were very closed off to the idea it was okay. not stylish at all to um, not modern right so some so. of these other ones that we're looking at there's one that reminds me of this one and that's this um, the binding of Isaac and you told me that this one is a series part of a series of about uh, a series on the book of Genesis right and I see the same lacy uh, frame around there mm -hmm. and very much the same tone of different colors being used some symmetry some freestanding pieces so um, explain to me um, these other two or or say something if you wish about this I'm sorry I didn't mean to um, which ones are you well I'm looking at the uh, the binding of Isaac the, the right. series uh huh. What well, I, what other things did you do in that series? Oh, that um, well, there's Jonah and the whale. Oh, that was in the exhibit. Y yes. yes. And um, I did, I did several others. I did. And it all at, of all yeah. in the same style with the same frame. This Mexican lacy thing. Well, they were. Yeah, yeah. I would say they were all a little bit similar in that respect. That, but mainly, I was interested in telling the story. Did you get that uh, as as part of a book? No, it was just, um, it was a challenge. I was just trying to come up with something to do. But this would be really something wonderful to put I, into a book form. Yeah, I would, I was thinking I could eventually maybe publish it in a, in a series or maybe, um, yeah, bind it together somehow. Oh, and, I look um, forward to that. Maybe I'll yeah. try to help you out on that one. Oh, okay. I like that. That's a good yeah. challenge for me. Yeah. So these other two here, you spoke to me about your real love of folk tales and folk right. traditions. Yeah. And so I see one that looks, it's a paper cut. We had it in the exhibit, but it's also really a collage. Right. Miss Tick Tick? Uh, Lady Tick Tick. Lady Tick Tick. Yes. yes. Lady Tick Tick. This is a part of a series that I'm working on as we speak. Um, uh, my husband and I one year went, I didn't tell you about this, but we went to, um, we spent a year abroad in Azerbaijan and um, we collected folk tales while we were there because it was an interest of mine and we collected over 50 folk tales and I'm, I'm working on that now. How so wonderful. That's, um, that's one piece. And Is this the first one? Um, oh, it doesn't matter. I don't know where, which came first but it's, um, it's been really fun 
And, and they'll all be in the <coughs> same style, more or less? Um, I'm not sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, uh -huh. it's ongoing. Uh, but it's, um, I've always been interested in, in folk tales. Um, to me, it just, it just really speaks to a um, tradition coming down from, from you know, an oral tradition. Yeah, mother to child or whatever. Or, and uh, I think it's really important to, to recognize those stories because they're so old, and you see them, you see them repeated in different, different forms and different styles in different traditions, mm -hmm. and it's really fascinating. So. so the one, the other one, the one that's uh, blue, blue and white and black. Uh, what's right. that one called? The that's one, the, the one with the mermaid. The mermaid. Um, again, it's you know, mermaids are a. It, it's another world that. Um, that's in folk tradition. So I'm just sort of looking at that world and and trying to visualize it and put it in a. F Oh, so so to, to help our audience focus on this a little bit, notice that the blue part is really a folded piece of paper and it's identical on both sides. And the white part is part is folded also. And you have the two octopus pie, octopi. Right. And, uh, and then you have one mermaid. So it, at some point where the uh, seahorse is, it switches to not not a repeat of what's happening on the left and right. And so there are some different traditions here, but there's no frame like she's had in the other ones. So, right. um, well, you know, I just, I do whatever I need to do to tell a story. That's, to me, it's the story that, that I want to tell. And the, you know, I'm trying to vi just put it in a visual form. Uh huh. So I don't know where this is going to go. I may do other mermaids. It's a, I like mermaids. You like mermaids. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. So what? Um, I, I I also note that you um, that you do lots of other things. You well, you I do I've weaving. You do, you do anything that is creative. Right. Um, I've done a lot of weaving. I've been doing that since I've I was sixteen or so. Um, and I, I've tried different things. I've tried book binding and basketry and, and I've done a lot of watercolors as well. Um, I just, I'm, I'm always tempted by a new, a new thing to do. I've done wor woodworking. So I try not to get too scattered, but that's that just, may be the, a, just, just uh, the way somebody's it is. opinion. <laughs> yes. Woodworking sounds like a whole s another set of tools. Well, that's that's a whole other subject. But um, my father had three girls, and and then much later on, they they got a boy finally. So I learned all the camping skills. I learned woodworking, how to saw, use a saw and a hammer. I learned, you know, all the all the normal sort of boy skills. That's just just the way it was. You know, so some <laughs> of you in town may know Jay Stryker. He teaches a class here called Make. And what it is is to teach children how to use tools and how to be independent and, uh, and creative. Yeah, yeah. And, and know those tools. And, and you're right, all the, all the children in that class are boys. Mm. Yeah, I learned how to, how to wield an ax, you know, how to chop down a tree. Um, and I'm, I feel comfortable learning new things. And I think I, I enjoy it because, um, because it gives me self-confidence that I can tackle anything. So, so um, Edith, what are you working on now? Well, I'm working on portraits. Um, that's my main focus at the moment, and I've also I'm working on the folk tales, so that's that's pretty much my main focus at the moment. So the f the portraits, are you considering doing portraits in paper cut? Not really. I I've done silhouettes. Yes, yeah, like um, Jack, m Mr. and Mrs. Jack Spratt right, over here. Right, but I've done portrait silhouettes too. So that's. Oh. That's always something I can do. Uh huh. Right. So are these going to be in egg tempera? Yes. 
Yes. And why do you choose egg tempera over oil? Well, it's, it doesn't smell quite so bad. <laughs> oh. It's a little easier on your, you know, on the air quality. What do you do with all those egg whites? Down the drain. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're so. going to do a pe uh, an egg uh, decorating um, class here. Maybe we can, we can do a trade. You, you take the inside and I take the outside. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's an idea. Well, <laughs> we'll do some business. Right. So the paintings are going to be egg tempera, the portraits. Right. And you're, you're, do you pick people you know or are you just inventing people in your head? No, 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 no. I, I do portraits of people that I know. And how so do you pick somebody? Well, I... Because you love them or because they're yeah, interesting I, looking? I both. I, I like um, to choose people that I find interesting. In there, I don't know, it's, I, it's hard to explain, but there are certain faces that, I, that really speak to me visually and, and people that mean something to me in my life. And, and so. I, I know that you're going to be showing the paintings where? At the Shelburne Arts Co-op Gallery. In when? In Shelburne Falls. In? That will be in July. In July. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we yeah. can go and see in July what right. faces you find interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I look forward to that and I look yeah. forward to showing more of your work in this gallery at the Deerfield Arts Bank. Oh, that would be nice. And, um, and I thank you for this time together. Okay. Well, it was nice. So um, <coughs> we will continue our interviews with uh, local artists. And if you have names that you'd like to contribute and suggest for interviews, or if you have questions that uh, I'm not asking that you'd like me to ask, please um, contact me at the email below. I think it's um, talkingart at fcat.tv. And um, I'm Jane Trigere. We're at the Deerfield Arts Bank. This is Talking Art, and see you next week. <laughs>